clicking companions. Um, nightmare mode, I guess. Uh, it's the same day, but I'm trying to distract myself. I don't normally play these back to back. Well, I mean, it's not back to back. It's been a while, a couple hours probably. But here we are back at it again. Do you see how dark it is? Ooh, it's cold. But I can't look at you. Look at me. Are you scared? Oh! What? Run! 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 <laughs> I'm scared. Oh my god, I was literally like spam clicking. You wake in a cold sweat. Okay! Your surroundings feel completely different. Yeah, I mean, why are we in the bed? Mariah's presence is enraged. She's beckoning you to follow her. You get up and leave the bedroom. Okay, cool. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. What a fitting end to such a horrible nightmare. You head to the kitchen for some breakfast. Okay, oh god. This will take ages to clean. Oh yeah? You don't say. You take a few bites of meat. You lost more of your humanity. You stare into the ash pile in the oven. Are they still upset? You head back to the bedroom to take a nap. Oh boy. <laughs> so much blood. Which one of them is causing this? Mariah? Anatoly? Gregor? K you crawl into bed and fall asleep. Day... Someday. 616. Okay. Sure. Wake up, sleepyhead. Karen? Karen isn't here. I could hear her whittling. It sounds like she's whittling something again. Did she escape the basement? Karen? No reply. You head over to investigate. Oh. Okay. Another trick by one of them. Who's still missing? Karen? Someone is tapping on the window. Why is it kind of cute though, in like a twisted way? Like <laughs> these little gumdrop eyes. I'm sure it's supposed to be like hollow eye sockets or something. I don't know. I can't get the taste out of my mouth. Are you done, Anatoly? <clears throat> Sorry, this is why I don't record them. Uh, <laughs> back to back. They're getting more bold in their actions. You had to bed to sleep on it. Oh, day six, six, six. I'll have some tea after this, promise. Okay, I don't promise, but I will try to have some tea after this. <laughs> the sheets are drenched, drenched in sweat. What's that? You catch something moving out of the corner of your eye. Oh, I didn't see anything. You roll out of bed to see what it is. It feels like 3 a.m. Nothing is moving around the bedroom anymore. Just your imagination again. The bone isn't in the floorboards anymore. Okay. I'm trying to pay more attention to see if things are changing. Because I forgot to pay attention to that it previously. <laughs> you head to the basement door. Is Karen still alive? A cold wind blows through the crack in the door. Ooh. You wake in a cold sweat. You wake up on the cold bathroom floor. The door is locked. Did one of them hide the key in here? Hmm. Where do you want to check first? Uh, in the garbage can under the sink. You check the garbage can underneath the sink. It's empty, like your soul. Inside the mouse hole. Mouse hole seems perfectly rounded, like someone used sandpaper on the edges. Did the trompettes do this? Under the tub. Mouse poops and dust have gathered underneath the tub. This needs to be swept. 
All right, let's check under the tub again. There's scratches on the side of the tub. What happened there? Under the tub. How did you miss this? You notice a note under the bathtub. May 4th, 1794. This note shall serve as a summons to the Zakopane Courthouse. You're being accused of the following crimes. Public disturbance, foul language, demeanor, refusal to testify in court cases. Do we hear this one? Failure to attend will result in immediate arrest and penalties up to hanging. You take the court summons letter with you. Okay, maybe not. Under the tub. Nothing else to find under the tub. Inside the mouse hole. The hole itself is pitch black. Would the flashlight be helpful? It might aggravate whatever horror li lies in wait. Stick your arm in the mouse hole? You slowly put your entire arm in the mouse hole and feel around. You feel a chilly presence of something behind you. The key is pushed into your hand. You pull your arm out, lifting up the toilet seat to take a celebratory bathroom break. Your hands are shaking uncontrollably from the whisper. The key has fallen into the toilet. Reach into the filthy toilet to get the key. Yeah. This is the only way to get out of the bathroom. You plunge your hand into the toilet, grasping blindly for the key. It must have gone down the pipe. Oh, wow! You really put your hand in a filthy backed up toilet, huh? This seems to be a new low for you. Haha. <laughs> Are you finally gonna wash your hands now? The sink isn't working. Oh wow! Will the bacteria be the thing that does you in? Such a pathetic end for such a terrible life. Ha <laughs> That key wasn't even for the bathroom door. That was the key to the Chompette's treasure box. You really stepped in it this time. Ha ha ha. Cabbage told me I had to rescue you from this. I wanted to let you starve to death in here, but she insisted. Here you go. Raspberry unlocked the bathroom door. This is the last favor you'll get from me. Goodbye, wretch. I, I'm so confused by the chompettes. Like, one... Sometimes they seem really on her side, and other times they're, like... Uh, they're upset. Uh, they hate me. You let out a deep breath and exit the bathroom. Wait, but I wanted to check the trash some more. It's time to end this. You open the door and get ready for what's next. It's just a staircase. Nothing to be scared of. You begin your descent. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to click. The spirits aren't active right now. You continue downward. <laughs> oh. The walls down here, they're dirt, dirt and soot. It's nothing. You keep moving downward. The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Karen with each step. Something is approaching. He. <laughs> Sorry, got my mouse hand ready. Stop, 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 stop. A false alarm. You bitch. You sneaky little fucking bitch. You freaked me out. Oh, watch. I'm gonna click this and something's gonna jump out at me. Okay. Are the spirits below going to spring a trap on you? You can need it downwards. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's just bloody. You hear something in the distance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's trembling. Oh man. I hate everything. 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 Ugh. You done? Yeah. A so tau peridito aki. Uh, Perry Diesel Aki. I don't know. Something about like here, but is this Doyle you or us maybe? 
like the usted us in Spanish. I obviously this is in Spanish, but like you can see the similarities. I think, unless I'm dumb. I'm afraid to push the button. <laughs> I'm stalling. Yes, I'm stalling. Estás con frío? Are you cold? I think. You shake your head. Oh. Vamos conversar la embaxio, okay? U tenho outros que quero mostrar a você? Okay. Uh. Que quero. Something about going. <laughs> uh, maybe a conversation. Lambaxio. La is probably the, right? Or maybe not because cause la is feminine. So lambaxio would be feminine, but it's not. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to learn a new language here. I'm stalling. I know it. Okay. Andalas now para de susurrar sobre uma gaula de passarinho. Yeah, I just don't. Four para. Mm. Vejo, vo, vo, what did I say before? Voce? No final? Okay, it left. I don't know what it was saying. I'll put it into a translator in post. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was holding my breath too! <laughs> You hold your breath and continue downward. Oh god. Something is approaching. Oh, what is that? <laughs> this game is purely fictitious. It cannot harm you in any way, shape, or form. It just says that over and over. Kono <laughs> gameu. You regain consciousness. You're further down the staircase. Oh, when you regain. Okay. You awake with a note next to your head. It's difficult to read, but you can make out a sentence. Don't get up before Saturday. You take the Saturday note with you. All right. Four or five notes. The sound of rain has completely stopped down here. Your eyes are strained down here. The pressure is intense. You feel like you're trapped under miles of ocean. You continue downwards. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. You navigate the basement blindly until you reach the room with four directions. You can barely make out the outlines of door frames in each direction. Which way should you go? Uh... I don't know. North. Once you open the northern door, a cold wind blows over you. Sorry, I was thinking about that. I should have saved, but you can't save when you get in a choice. But then I was like, maybe I could scroll back. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm just freaking out. This area reminds you of an underground cave. You can make out the door at the end of this hallway. You have a bad feeling about opening it, though. Open it. No. You leave the door shut, staring at it. The room gets colder and colder. You begin to get sleepy. Eventually, you lie on the ground, your flesh slowly freezing until your heart makes one last pathetic pulse. You wake in a cold sweat. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Let's go north and open the door. I should have saved, but I'm dumb. <laughs> Can make out the door. It's probably fine. Open it. Yes. Oh. You wake in a cold sweat. Yeah, that's very... Very much reminds you of Gigi, though. You're at the four doorways again. Okay. 
Let's go south. This room feels warmer when you enter. You begin sweating more than normal. There's a door at the end of this hallway, but it's so hot you feel like you're going to pass out. Ooh, you slowly open the door, crack, and peer inside. Vines cover the entire ground. <laughs> you ache in a cold sweat. It's pretty cool! You're lying in the middle of the four directions. Which way do you want to go? It's safe. Because I, I want to explore all of them, you know? Let's go west. Your eyes struggle to see down this hallway. You strain your eyes to make out an outline of a door. You slowly open it. <laughs> Wait a second. I've seen that rap before. What the hell? I'll have to look into it. I have for sure seen that rap before, though. In a different visual novel, I thought. Maybe it's like a... I don't know. I don't know. You wake in a cold sweat. You're lying in the middle of the four directions. Which way do you want to go? East. Your hands run across a large door. Maybe now isn't the time for this. You walk back to the basement steps, trying to remember why you came this far. Found you. Okay. Let's end this. Okay, we don't have to fight her again. That's good. Oh, shit. Okay. Sure, buddy. Sure. Karen escapes down the hallway, leaving a trail of blood behind her. You follow her to the room in the east. Oh, shit. Why she got the knife again? Turn on the light. Reap what you have sown. Mariah. Anatoly. Gregor. Karen. I'll never forget you. The nightmare is over. Okay. So I guess that was another ending? Nothing bad could happen. Everything <laughs> is totally great. But please do refrain from going in the basement. Cooking companions. Okay. <laughs> Your life just might end. Cooking companions. Don't trust that onion. Oh? Cooking time is so much fun And nothing bad could happen Everything is totally Oh, oh, looking at this The rat was probably somebody else's sprite Like, like a, like a Free-to-use sprite Royalty-free sprite That's the, what I was trying to say All right. Nice lyrics. That's cool. I dig. Chumpid's Canon Courses. Starring cabbage, onion, raspberry, bread, and potato. Okay. Hey guys. Hello! Welcome to Chompette's Cabin Courses. We missed school too much, so we wanted to bring it back. Honest. I'll be playing the role of teacher today. You can call me Miss Cabbage if you like. Sure. Let's just roll with it, alright? Ha ha ha. Can't wait to learn some new things today. Me too. Aren't you excited, Potato? I dropped out of grade school so I could work at the butcher. That's extremely depressing. <laughs> I, I dropped out of high school so I could work. I don't think that's as depressing though, gonna be honest. Explains everything so far. 
Is it- Is he quiet because he doesn't want to sound held back? <laughs> you three are terrible at whispering. <laughs> they never learned their inside voices, Potato. Ha ha ha. Cabbage looks like you're right in the eyes. Oh, no. Ca cabbage looks like you're- Oh, what? Cabbage looks you right in your eyes. There's no questions or wrong answers today. The Chavance cabin courses are designed to let you passively learn. Your brain is poured right now, right? These courses will be perfect for that. That's correct, Onion. And the best part? No silly humans to interrupt anything. You ask about dead humans. <laughs> Ghosts aren't real silly. You ask about... That's enough. No questions about ghosts today. Save it for a practicing medium. I don't know what he said. I skipped. Sorry. <laughs> I got a cornbread classic for you. What's a ghost's favorite food? Booger. You need to get bread a joke book. These puns are pathetic. Let the learning begin. You decide to listen to the chomp heads. Although you have the feeling something else is at play. Yeah. For the first lesson, let's talk about that nasty oven. One of us was baked into a crust. You threw half of it away without hesitation. Human life is completely disposable to you. That's enough! I don't understand. So the trumpets are humans? I don't get it. I... Wait. Are the... Wait. Maybe... Maybe the Chompettes are our friends, but we see them as food? Because... We've been eating people? I don't know. I seem to have lost my place in the teaching curriculum. Oh, Let's talk about the cauldron instead. The first cauldron discovered dates back to the Bronze Age, which took place... 3,000... 100 BC with 3100 BC. I don't know how to say that <laughs> To 300 BC You can see a cauldron in the famous artwork the garden of earthly delights Where a bird man is wearing one like a crown as he eats and poops people down into a hellhole below Yikes Wouldn't want to fall into a hellhole. Okay Most of us were placed into this cauldron stewing for a day straight The smell was so foul Clung to all linens in the cabin, absolutely revolting. Cabbage. Raspberry. Need to speak with you for a minute. In private. <laughs> okay. The two awkwardly leave the bedroom, slamming the door behind them. You can hear Cabbage chewing out raspberry. I'm a child. <laughs> uh, what is another name for Brussels sprouts? <laughs> Cabbage Patch Kids! <laughs> wow, you're so funny. Bread, that wasn't even a pun. Or a joke. It was more like a stalling. <laughs> Ra uh, Cabbage and Raspberry joined the group again. Raspberry, is there something you'd like to say? There is cabbage. You've committed crimes against humanity. You're a scourge on this earth, sent to punish us. Cabbage may forgive you, but I never will. Wow, look at the time. This concludes the Chompette's cabin courses. Did you learn anything this time? Or did you just loaf around? Haha. -ha. I'm so confused. Are you remembering it yet? Just join me in the boiling water sometime. Really loosens the meat off those old bones. Right in that nasty oven. There's nothing but a big pile of ashes in the oven. Have you seen that knife? Yikes. Big enough to cleave a cabbage in two. Still leftovers in here. Dig in. The rules are different for people that die in the cabin. Everyone that does will know the kitchen well. The lucky ones are dead when cooked. The others. The others have told us what you did to them. How many generations died brutally at your hands before you gave up? Was it your arthritis that stopped you, or did you eventually feel remorse? That's enough. 
I don't understand. Thanks for playing along today. It was fun to revisit some old topics. Let's sleep on some of this, shall we? We've made your bed. Sweet dreams. Okay. All right, welcome to New Game Plus. This playthrough will have different dialogue events and decisions to make. Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen will start with three hearts each. Use this opportunity to max out your relationships. We highly recommend you create a manual save file right now for this shorter playthrough. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, Mariah will not be available to Max. Sorry. Thank you for playing Cooking Companions. We hope you enjoyed the experience. Oh, almost forgot. Jump scare mode activated. Wait! Just kidding. Oh, okay. I mean, you already jump scared me, so... <laughs> Fuck you. Okay, I see. So this is starting with Mariah leaving. Karen, Anatoly, and Gregor. I'll keep us alive. I promise. Everyone watches Mariah leave the cabin. The silence is deafening. Dear Dream Studio, this is presents cooking companions. Okay. After the three go to bed, you finally have an opportunity to use the bathroom. The candle blew out again. You grasp blindly along the floor until you find a flashlight in the corner. This bathtub is filthy. I'll need more than a little elbow ge grease to get these stains out. Hmm? You notice a note underneath the bathtub. Alright. Yeah. Take the court summons letter. Where's the other shine at? I'm avoiding the mirror. Someone forgot to restock the toilet paper. Beyond disgusting. This is truly the scariest thing you've ever seen. With your interest waning, you decide to leave the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Time to surprise the others. You take out a cutlet of meat and begin to cook it in the oven. You cooked meat. Why is it getting bigger? Is it getting bigger? It was, I think. Where did you get that? You ignore Karen's question. What's that smell? Gregor finally gets off the couch. Where did you... The three are looking at you salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting into small cutlets. They immediately grab some off the plate, chewing ferociously. Do you have any more of this? You explain how the meat is stored securely, hidden so you can ration it better this time. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Anatoly runs to the bathroom, puking in the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. This taste is... Gregor wanders off. Anatoly returns, looking choked up. Okay, we saved him some of the meat. I don't want to, like, go back over all of this, because we just did this. Well, I... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. He turns his back and eats the meat. I can hear him crying. Finally, my focus is coming back. Gonna read some of those books. Keep them occupied, okay? She leaves. Who do I want to talk to? Uh... Gregor in the bedroom. Hey! Thanks for cooking the meat earlier. I was nearly passing out from the hunger pains. Even if I'm a meat potatoes kind of guy, I appreciate the vegetarian dishes you made earlier. You really respected Mariah's boundaries. Thank you. He's more dense than you gave him credit for. Hee. <laughs> if there's extras, slip me some extra meat. Okay. Gregor will remember that. Alright, bud. Our relationship is stronger. Going to see how Anatoly is doing. Later. Bye. You have the bedroom all to yourself. Where do you want to check first? 
Uh, under the beds. I feel like under both beds. Just some dust in here. Gross. Uh, under the floorboard. You notice the bone sticking out. Is it a human bone? Nope, chicken bone. Gross. Uh, inside of the nightstand. It's various children's toys. What is this? Uh, another body of child potatoes. Child and potatoes. Bloody newspaper. Hours passed. The meal you gave everyone. Is that a fucking face right there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. The hunger is now permanent within them. Oh, yeah, it was. It was for sure was. They're fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough. What's for dinner? You calmly explained that you want to ration the meat better this time, and there will be no dinner. Fine. I understand. Guess I'd rather eat tomorrow than more today. No arguments. Perfect. They call it an early night. You fall asleep. You have a strange dream. You're having dinner with a blacksmith, but he's not touching his food. Okay, this is when we get a poker in the eye. He ties you to your chair with a long rope, right? The force of the blow throws you backwards. And we vomit a whole bunch. Then he stands over us and spits and then we wake up. Yep. Day nine. Okay. Interesting. You wake up to see Gregor looking out the window. I'm checking for any spookies. Any spooky business. He turns to you, not smiling. Take a look out the window. Do you notice anything? The floodwaters have receded a little bit, but everyone is still bound to the cabin. The trail used to be completely visible. It's gone now. Oh, Anatoly. Good morning, big guy. I think we should have another piece of meat for breakfast. It's what you would have wanted. I think he's right. P please bring us some more of that meat. You grab some of the meat from your secret hiding place. You cut it into squares, adding it to the boiling cauldron water. It'll taste bland without any seasoning, but you need to serve it up right away. What's taking so long? Boil it faster. It looks almost done. Patience. It's finally finished. You serve the meat in bowls. Alright, no changes. Gregor drinks the broth first, before swallowing the chunks whole. Like a duck does, when eating bread. Anatoly doesn't eat. He apologizes. He doesn't know what's going on. I'm crying. Karen's finished. She didn't even see her start eating. Yep, yep, yep. Karen is staring right at you. How much more meat is left? You explain most of it has gone bad. This is the last of it. How could you be so careless again? You remember Karen's knife. You need to think fast. What the hell are we supposed to do now? Wait around again? The storm isn't ending. You clear your throat. Anatoly? Yes? I think tomorrow you should look for Mariah. Or forage for plants outside. I... I think you should go tomorrow, little guy. Nobody else can identify edible plants like you. Please, Anatoly. You can swim back after a few hours. Gregor is right, Anatoly. Maybe you'll find Mariah out there. I think Mariah's fine by herself. He still hasn't accepted what happened yet. She doesn't need anyone's help. But we need your help, Anatoly. That's right, Anatoly. 
Please help us. Let me sleep on it, okay? No problem. No, I don't want Anatoly to leave. Everyone shuffles off to their rooms, reading books and knitting to pass the time. What? You go to bed, Ravenous. Raya. Something is approaching. How are we? How are we supposed to max out our hearts with these guys, though? Time to wake up. You ask Potato where the chompettes are. Cabbage on your raspberry and bread. They moved on. Just us now. Oh, look at that raspberry. I think we're alone now. The way it always should have been. I'm so confused. Your mind finally manages to forget everything that happened. You fall asleep again, still ravenous. Alright. Day 10. Okay. <laughs> I'm just waiting for sketchy shit. You have a strange dream. You're walking down the steps when you trip and fall. You snap every bone on the way down, landing in the basement as a writhing pile of flesh and bones. The whispers surround you, their laughter ringing in your ears. You wake in a cold sweat. <laughs> Something smells terrible in the living room. Anatoly puked in one of the corners. You leave it there so the others will question his fortitude. Good morning. Good morning, little guy. Well, Anatoly, what's your decision? I barely slept last night. Her whispers came through one of the holes in the floor. She kept telling me to come outside. Hmm. We don't want to rush you, but one of us puked last night. So that's what that smell was? Anatoly's playing dumb for the group. Anatoly, my patience is wearing thin. You have one hour to make a decision. Why? Why so quickly? Hmm. Because I'm not waiting any longer. You see the glint in Karen's knife under her dress. Best to watch out for that knife. The group disperses. Tensions seem to be rising. You have one hour to kill. What do you want to do? Uh, chat with Anatoly near the basement. Because I don't want him to go. Anatoly looks pale. Thanks for coming over. Anatoly seems comforted by your presence. Our relationship is stronger. Maybe I should have gone like, Gregor, Gregor, Anatoly, Anatoly, you know, like two different playthroughs. Oh well. Gregor told me he's heard Mariah. I'm sure Karen is being honest with me. Isn't being honest with me. Have you checked out the basement door closely? Every so often, I could see her pe peeking out at me through the holes. I really don't want to drown outside. But at least I won't have to, won't have to have her torment me anymore. You know it's in the basement, don't you? Yes. Of course you do. How else would you keep us fit? Anatoly looks like he's going to puke. Please get away from me. Anatoly leaves your vicinity. It looks like Anatoly will remember that. You call everyone together for a meeting. <sighs> Anatoly, you okay, little guy? Anatoly looks pale like he's going to pass out. Anatoly, have you made a decision? Yes. I'll help you all out, I promise. Thank you, Anatoly. Big tears roll down Gregor's cheeks. I'll miss you, big guy. I'll miss you, little guy. <laughs> Thank you, Anatoly. I know this wasn't easy, but it's for the best. Dude, it's night out. It's like, this is the worst time to be going. Karen, yes, I... Gregor looks at you expectantly. Do you want to say anything to Anatoly? You say nothing. Uh, I... Goodbye, Anatoly. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck, little guy. Anatoly has left the cabin. Yeah, figures. I wonder... See you soon, little guy. Hmm. Guess all we can do now is wait. Good night. Absent Anatoly. Hmm. Karen goes to bedroom to sleep. I didn't tell him the truth. Okay, so... I think that everyone dies in the same order every time. I don't think we could have done anything differently. 
Gregor is getting choked up. I didn't tell him. I'm missing him already. Okay. He curls up on the couch. You shut your eyes and quickly fall asleep. Ooh, he's scraping. <laughs> Red-haired woman won't let him live, will she? Too ravenous at this point. The more she consumes, the stronger she gets. At what cost? <laughs> Sometimes staying silent works better. Just walk away and pretend you're innocent later. What a terrible perspective Potato provided. The Chompettes would never have listened to this crap. You fall asleep thinking about what Potato told you. You have a strange dream. Lying, it's lying on the table in front of you. You take off the glasses first, partially cracked, and set them down next to the workbench. Day 11. It was just the dream about us carving up Anatoly again. You wake in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or? You found some meat. Everybody's still asleep. This would be a nice surprise after yesterday. You cook breakfast, cutting each slice thin. You're on each side in the oven. The smell's unique. Karen runs into the kitchen. What is that smell? Give it to me. Now. You don't argue. Karen grabs a cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. Ack. She hungrily devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. You thought she was concerned with rationing. Gregor wakes up from the couch and heads to the kitchen. Oh god. Already? Listen, we've already read all of this. Yeah, this isn't what I want. What I want is for you to skip through everything we've already read. Gregor cries and eats the meat. Uh, yeah. Okay, no need to ration anything now. Yeah, right. Sounding more determined than before. I'm gonna lie down on the couch, try to keep this food down. Karen leans in to whisper. I'm glad Mariah and Anatoly are gone. They were stopping us from bonding properly. How did you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back. And now it's all I can think about. I read the book on necropsy. The text is ancient, but the diagrams are beautifully drawn. Very descriptive. How many years did it take for you to perfect the craft? You tell her. Yeah, right. I used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? He'd be the next to leave, but he doesn't stand a chance. Why wait for him to come back? Karen hands you a vial of liquid. I think you know what needs to be done. Strong anesthetic. Gonna slip into Gregor's mug. Will you do this for me? Um, so my thoughts are... That saying yes will help Gregor. Because if we don't do it, she's just gonna chop him up without it. But say nothing is a new choice. I'm going to say yes. I knew you would. It looks like Karen will remember that. Our relationship is stronger. Dude, I don't give a fuck about your relationship, Karen. He looks frightened. I can't stop thinking about the little guy. I can't remember what happened before we arrived. It just never ends. I miss Anatoly and Mariah. Let us toast to Anatoly and Mariah. They'll always be inside of us, Gregor. Can't change that now. He a crying. We're having it raw tonight, Gregor. <laughs> Ew. What? Eating raw meat is one of life's greatest gambles. Get awfully sick, or... Gregor puts the meat into his mouth, ignoring the smell. He swallows each bite with the winds on his face. A Try not to get sick. I'll never forget the first time I met Anatoly. We were teenagers. I was chopping firewood outside the house. Anatoly brought 
over a butterfly net filled with them. He introduced himself and asked me if I wanted to hold one of the butterflies. I'd never held one before. He told me not to crush it between my large paws. He did have miniature hands himself, so I get it. And that's all. And... Karen, what did you put in this water? Would you do anything to save your friends, Gregor? Of course. Gregor's eyes start to droop. What the hell was Karen's liquid? I think it's best to have an early bedtime tonight. Let me help you onto the couch, Gregor. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Gregor passes out cold. I mean, the least you could do is, like, let him die on a bed. Thank you. I'll do the rest. Even if he screams, please ignore Gregor when he wakes up. Okay. You don't want to interrupt Karen with this. Yeah. You leave her alone, going to the bedroom and clawing into, be into the bed Anatoly slept in. You fall asleep. I don't know what's going on, dudes. This game is just a never, never ending cycle. Wake up, sleepyhead. Okay. <laughs> very similar, very similar to the demo, but it's different, which is interesting. You were having a nightmare. Gregor is waiting for you. You get out of bed and follow Karen to the couch. Oh god. Yeah, that's new. Gregor. Oh jeez. I think he's trying to speak. What is it, Gregor? You tell Karen that Gregor has died. He hasn't spoiled yet. Let me show you the rest of him. Karen shuffles over to the basement door, opening the lock with a knife. Why wait until she's in the basement? Take back the knife and end her life. You explain how difficult it is to get the blood out of wood. Your laziness is unbelievable. The minute those four entered the cabin, you should have killed all of them. You're getting soft. You nursed a weakened butcher back to health? What if she ends up killing you now? I brought you the key. When she goes downstairs, lock the door behind her with the devil. Then let her rot, Karen Potato. Might have made great allies in another life. You need to stop her before it's too late. Okay, it's kind of glitchy. You walk over to the basement door. Where's Karen? Oh. When are you fixing this hole? You can feel her breath coming through the crack in the door. You lock the basement door. What the hell are you doing? Goodbye, Karen. She slips into the darkness. All right. You climb onto the couch to rest, waiting for the basement noises to become silent. Oh boy. I really have no idea what's going on anymore. Okay, I do have like a vague idea. Like we definitely have learned stuff. Mariah was correct. It's freezing over here. The frigid air swirls visibly in front of you. The basement noises have completely stopped. What do you want to do? Uh, the bookshelf. There are various books on a wide variety of topics. No time to read them now, though. Look under the couch. Cobwebs. Thankfully, no spiders. Under the couch. Child's toy. How did this get under here? Look under the couch. Small wooden boat. That's weird. No ports anywhere near here. Look under the couch. It looks like there's a name engraved on it. Raziel. Maybe Bread would want this. Look under the couch. Bread's not around right now. You'll have to hold on to it till the moment's right. Bookshelf. Closer look at the subjects. Cooking, herbalism, skinning. Books that are good for surviving in the wilderness. Bookshelf. Carpentry, metalworking, tailoring, books that are good for crafting in the wilderness. Wasting time reading books? You were just browsing. Sure. Why not read this one? Potato Nudge is one of the books. The edges of the pages are a little singed. This was saved from a book burning. I wonder why. One may in truth proceed against such a man as against a person who is gravely suspect. What? 
but he is not to be condemned in his absence without a hearing. And yet the suspicion may be very grave, and we cannot refrain from suspecting these people, for their frivolous assertions do certainly seem to affect the purity of the faith. For there are three kinds of suspicion, a light suspicion, a serious suspicion, and a grave suspicion. You take the singed book with you. I'd say your entire life has been a grave suspicion. It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. Okay. That would never happen. Carrying around a book would be a burden, so you put it back. Alright. Okay, so we'll keep that. And the bookshelf? The rest of the books are boring. Okay, eat a meal. You decide to have a quick lunch at the table. Oh, jeez. She escaped! You wake in a cold sweat. Wake up, sleepyhead. Oh, that was from the demo. I think. <laughs> it's hard to remember. You were having a nightmare. Oh, wow. The sheets are completely soaked. Are you wetting the bed? You feel underneath you. Gross. You must have broken a fever because the sweat is everywhere. Don't worry, we could wash them in the basement. Just unlock the door. I will make a day of it. You're not that slow with laundry. Come with me. I have something to show you. You cautiously get up, following Karen out of the bedroom. Oh boy. What? The basement door was already open. I'm hungry. Let's get something from the basement. You feel the cold presence of Karen behind you. Goodbye. Is he gonna shove us down? Stop! Grab onto the railing. You do so, feeling a slight push on your back. You feel the presence leave. That was a close one. Karen will try everything in her power to kill you. Tread cautiously downstairs. Why are you helping me, Potato? Because I pity what you've become. You work your way down to the bottom of the stairs. I'm s super confused on a lot of things here. Something is approaching. Yeah. Can you hear me? It's Mariah. I've been down here the entire time. It's so good to see you again. Plenty of bread. Why aren't you saying anything? I'll never forgive you for what you did. You put Anatoly through hell. You desecrated my corpse. You gave them that disgusting hunger. All of that is wandered out of the bridge. Anatoly's down here. Come have some bread with us. They always try things like this. Yep. Yeah. Anger concentrated near their grave leads to tricks and traps. Okay. Shush, Mariah. We've, we've already heard you say all this before. One piece of advice? Beware of Karen. She's ill beyond repair. Gregor will ta try. Anatoly will try. Karen will rip the flesh from our bones. We'll talk again. Okay, see you later, Mariah. You feel Mariah leaving the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. The walls down here, they're dirt, dirt, dirt and soot. Something's approaching. It's Grigor. Glad I found you. Dude. Are you frightened by her? If you won't come upstairs with me, please turn on the light when you reach the room. Okay. Beware of Karen. Yep, 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 yep. Feel Gregor leaving the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. Getting closer to Karen. Something's approaching. It for sure is Anatoly. We know this, because we've been over this. Alright, come on. Yep. Oh, thought you'd still be fending off that glutton Gregor. Tell him about our meeting. Guess there's no fooling you. You ask Anatoly where Karen is. Oh, she's just below us. Waiting to devour you. 
Karen's been practicing her butchering again. Uh, worse than any war crime. Yep, 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 yep. It ends at the bottom. Karen might be alive down here, but you won't be. See you again soon. Yep. Yeah, we've been through all this. Anatoly leaves. You grit your teeth and keep going. You hit solid ground. Mm -hmm. Quick save. <laughs> you feel around the ball, blindly locate the light switch. Found you! Karen's grown stronger than you as of late. Consuming her friends has imbued her with rage. She's lost in the abyss. Nothing what? but death can end this madness. Hope you're prepared for what comes next. You can feel something creeping up in front of you. Hello. It's cabbage! Cabbage, what are you? Cabbage. It took us forever to move the rubble you put in the mouse holes. Chompets, <laughs> come out! Hey, bread, I have something for you. There, Revere, onion is here. Like my cousin Corbett says, I'll rise to the occasion. Raspberry. Sometimes, Mary Raspberry. What lie did you tell them, Potato? That you had moved on. <laughs> Will you let us go? You shake your head. Someday, maybe. Trumpets! Cabbage. You can't allow Karen to take over the cabin. She's much worse than you, Stinky. Did you see what she did to Gregor? Unhinged. She's a cut above you right now. You don't need her help with this. Just remember what she's done. Channel that anger. She's just like potato now, right? I'm still here, cabbage. <laughs> and as punishment for earlier, we're locking you in the room again, potato. No chomp at trial needed. You got company down here, potato. One of us should hide the key. That's enough. No need to twist the knife. Can I give bread the, bo the boat? Good luck. Trumpets, let's help out. The trumpets get in position behind you, ready for what's next. You feel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. Found you. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay, I don't have to fight her again. Good for us. It seems like she might finally be dead now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. Radish. Cabbage. Look, he's trying to speak. Don't be shy, try again. Might take a few more days. Welcome to the Chompets, turn up. Ugh. Here we go again. Whoa, fuck. Okay, that's new. Um. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this series. Yeah, there's a lot more to discover, I'm certain. But I'm going to I'm gonna stop the series here. Because I don't like to spoil everything anyway. Just in case you want to support the deaths. Um, yeah, you can get out of here with that creepy ass face. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry. I stretched and it made me yawn. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming out and playing with me. Make sure you stretch too. Drink some water. Take care of yourselves. <laughs> that face every time. And I'll see you all in the next one, alright? <laughs>